Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mecca Banner Podcast. Man, it feels good to be back, fellas. Let me tell you. It's great to see you guys. I hope all of you listeners have had a great weekend. We had some great footy to watch, some great games to break down. But let's start with the introductions. I'm your host tonight, Bucci Main. I'm not even going to give you my Twitter because I don't use it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, sh- and slide over to Mr. Andy Hoover. Man, I'm sure you are all sorts of feelings, man. How you doing, bro? I mean, so pumped to be here, guys. So pumped. <laughs> I couldn't be more excited for a podcast episode. I'm ready for it. It feels like I signed up for a waxing appointment. So just fucking <laughs> rip the paper. Let's rock. Hey, but you're here. You're here. We're, ha- we're happy you showed up. Scotty, Scotty couldn't make it. Scotty uh, wasn't. <laughs> I, I did text him. Uh, Scotty pretty much was like, we just need to end the season. And yeah, felt him. So good to be here, though. Happy to chat. Let's do it. <laughs> stoked to have you. Absolutely stoked to have you, brother. Uh, Lucas Winkleman, how you doing, bro? What's up, gentlemen? Good to be here. Uh, we'll 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 talk about the game, obviously. So I I won't dig too much into that. But we are still at the top of the table, nonetheless. So it's a great day to be an Arsenal fan. More or less, right? More or less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say, I will say, you know, uh, this is, a, this is a side note, but Lucas Winkleman can play some golf. We played some golf on Saturday. This man can swing a club. Bro, He's so can you. Man. You were sandbagging the hell out of us. <laughs> yeah. I was on the on the first <laughs> hole. On lag. the first hole, this man is zigzagging back and forth with shots like on either side of the rough all along the fairway. And I was like, all right, this is kind of what I expected. I have no idea how much Butch <laughs> plays golf. And then every hole from then on out, he did not hit a ball that wasn't straight as an arrow. I was so confused. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we took a loss to, to him and Christian in, in match play. It was a fun day, though. Fun day. Uh, Mr. Sandobri, I see you got Harry Kane's big old head behind your head. How you That's doing, great. bro? Uh, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Out of, out of one, t- got the out same of one haircut. tournament. Yeah, he looks great. Uh, out of one tournament <laughs> and, and into another final. Um, so kind of a weird week to be a United fan this week. Um, but none, nonetheless, um, 10 Hag, two finals first season. Can't complain, fellas. So happy to be here. Happy to dive into it today. Yeah. Congratulations on getting into another final. You know, um, I'll save my analysis for later on. But congrats. Uh, our other United brother, Mr. Henry Wine. How are you, sir? Great, bro. I'm great, fellas. Uh, it's a great day, and it's a great week to be a Manchester United fan, as always. Um, I am really excited to go, go into some of these games today. I feel like there's just so much to dive into this week. Uh, yeah, stoked. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you know, I will say, Henry, that's an interesting picture choice because it looks like Lindelof's poking the ref's butthole. <laughs> 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 that no one was that. intentional Clip that. whatever you okay. do, it, uh, do not smell this finger i just yeah. thought I Amer- america's just future okay. teaching america's right. future lindelof had a great game though i will say sure did sure did. um last but not least we've got our chelsea fan oh my god that's hard to say i feel bad for you but uh we got nick hayflinger here tonight uh hey how we doing bro you know, hey, we're not we're not doing too bad. Um, Chelsea did not play this weekend, so uh, my weekend was not ruined by them. Um, so I was pretty happy. Um, I I will say I'm very happy to be back on the podcast. Um, was not here last week, um, and to be honest, we didn't have any representation from a Chelsea supporter last week, um, and that is off a two one loss to Brighton, right? And I think. Us fellas had a little deal, and I want to share this video that I have made for you guys. <laughs> and as we are doing this, I am going to – hold up, let me see. This is great. What's coming? What's coming? What's coming? <laughs> Can you see my screen? Yeah, bro. Can you hear it? Good morning, Mecca. Yeah. yeah. It is Tuesday, April 18th at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was unable to attend. Oh, I'm so jacked. (laughs) And as you guys know, we made a bet. And the bet is that the person who doesn't show up after their side loses has to wear the opposing jerseys for the week. (laughs) Now, I'm going to be doing (laughs) (laughs) 
boys may not know that I am, which may play it to my side. So here's the jersey lineup for the week. I'm going to be alternating between these disgusting kits. <laughs> Look at these, bro. <laughs> Go. Stay tuned for the week ahead. <laughs> and shout out to Dobes for this because he honestly put me on. This is the ugly kit I'll be wearing today. But you've never I looked better, bro. Never seen. I've never seen a side of insane. Into some khakis before. <laughs> <laughs> I said top button gang all week. You saw it. They won. Yes, the, the <laughs> disappointment. The 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 fix, bro. Oh, he's so sad. You may not think I'm wearing it at work. Here I am. Well, my technology. The ATC. The technology Center. There's that ugly crust. Oh, you You're poor a guy. Champ, bro. This is. Oh, my God. You want to talk about integrity. Yeah, bro. I was going to give you shouts for that, dude. This is the next level like that so so far so good i'll keep you updated (laughs) (laughs) or wearing the jerseys but i'm very lucky that at work i'm allowed to wear sweatshirts because i get to hide these ugly ass jerseys all week it is an ugly liverpool kid Look how cute you are, bro. <laughs> oh, inside out, yes. Inside out. <laughs> this one under this was not going to, it was going to be see-through. So I had to throw it inside out so the boys wouldn't see because I'm going over to Dobes' house. Secret mission, wear Manchester United jersey at Connor Sandovi's house. <laughs> oh, that's so fucked. <laughs> in his bathroom. That's in his bathroom. <laughs> That's unreal. So fucked. That is so funny. I should have had the heat on blast. (laughs) (laughs) Sunday. Um, Today, United is playing Brighton in the FA Cup, so I am not wearing a Manchester United jersey. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But we shall see. I'm rocking this one all day today. I think this is like the third time I've worn it this week. But yeah, almost done. Home stretch. Incredible! Yes. Man, that, is, uh, that is fantastic, Nick. Can that you is yes. Down? Can you break Bless. down the video? Which, for our which you owe us about oh. four of those. Yeah, yeah dude. I had, I had <laughs> Bro, right. your season just started. Yeah, let me tell you. Monday. Let me tell you. The week was very interesting. I went golfing. I have photos of that. There's more photos that I want to add and videos that I had. I went golfing with, I think it was the red United kit underneath. Um, was at Dobes' house, fully wearing the United so kit. Bad. I also played last night outdoor soccer with everyone wearing the, the United on. kit. I was oh wearing the United God. kit underneath the oh. polo. You're complaining about the Apollo over. I also still have a screenshot of us talking about it in the group message. And I responded. I don't know if you guys noticed. All I responded with when you guys were asking, oh, I got a Rooney kid. Oh, I got this. Was I said, I'm a man of my word. That's all I said. I didn't 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 respond. So from that moment, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to make a video and then post it on TikTok for the love. Electric. That's huge. Big That's amazing. That's amazing. amazing. my, My skin. My skin feels so much better. Yeah, right did you get now. like a rash or something wearing those all week? God. Bro, was... what do you mean? You got to walk around like a winner for a week for once. Right? Hey, I, will... <laughs> I will also say I go with your chest out, bro. I will also say I scored I scored a goal in the outdoor game and I immediately was like, you motherfuckers. I'm wearing yeah, yeah, dude, right now. Yeah. <laughs> so what That's you do, bro? Amazing. Yeah. I will say so, that. Oof. Wow. But you, but you get your notepad out, write that down, and say it for next time so you remember. I got a Hold bunch of second. Gooners kits. Hold on a second, okay? Last Monday, at this time you were recording, I was beating the number one team in Missouri. Okay, you know, you know what? Not reason. wearing an Arsenal reason. kit. You, you know had a what? Valid you reason, you skip, you skip that game, and you come to the podcast, bro. Oh <laughs> <Yeah>. my! <God. laughs> Biggest Jesus. game of the year says who? <laughs> Well, Nick, I will say that's one of the best videos I've ever seen. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Top notch. That was well done. Great. Yeah, so for the listeners, it'll be out on our TikTok uh, probably when this is out as well. So you'll get to be able to watch it there. 
Absolutely class. fantastic. Beautiful video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get rolling here. We got the Premier League. As always, you know, we got to talk about our clubs, man. We got to talk shit, get banged, as Jamie Vardy says. You know what I mean? So we're going to start with Arsenal, who played Friday, April 21st, at home against Southampton. Oh, my God. I was absolutely buzzing when Southampton went up 2-0, and I was like, man, I got to text Winks, man. And then I didn't text Winks because they scored, and it really hurt my feelings because I wanted to just talk shit. So, Winks, <laughs> Winks, can you talk about this game and the frustrations that you may have had? Because I think you might have, in a sense, you might have blown that momentum that you've been carrying for so just long. Just say it, just say it, boys. Bottle the title. You might hasn't have ha- hasn't happened it. yet. Um, might. A lot of, lot of games left. Hasn't yet, so it will. Thanks, <laughs> Love the confidence. That's exactly what I said. Thanks for twisting that, yeah. Um, no, yeah. For, for those who didn't see the game, we, we drew Southampton at home three, three, uh, there's, there's a lot to unbury here and I don't, I don't want to go too far in depth because at the end of the day, it was three, three, we got a point. Um, but to start out with the lineup, Fabio Vieira started and he's traditionally been the sub for Chaka all season. Chaka had some sort of illness, um, I don't know if I would have necessarily played him to start. I think that, you know, we all know that Trissard's had an incredible season with Arsenal when he has played since January. So I feel like starting him over Vieira made sense here. Not a knock on Fabio at all. He's a great player. Um, But just the way Trissard's been performing, even Jorginho in terms of maybe having a couple more buildup options out of the back, knowing that, you know, we're playing Rob Holding at center back right now. I think that party and and Jorginho might have been a shout in that sense too but it definitely sucked to watch you know an unfortunate error from Ramsdale at the beginning of the game doing his best to hey impression worse yeah way, seemed way to worse. uh seemed to rattle us quite a bit you know I know that the Emirates was pretty quiet there and then they scored the second and I feel like when most of our clubs go down 2-0 quickly to teams that they shouldn't we're all just like at a loss for words a little bit um I know I definitely was, wasn't the start that I was expecting out of, out of the boys that typically are the ones that are hot off the start. Um, I think normally, you know, we've seen it all season. Ramsdale makes that pass well, nine out of 10 times all season. So I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, and none of us were keepers, so I don't know the exact science behind it, but looking back on it to me, hindsight's 2020. I don't know if that early in the game, that's the right pass you make. I feel like you either, you know, put it wide to a wing back if they're open or you just get it out of there. I feel like that's too dangerous of a ball to play that early in the game. Nonetheless, uh, it happened. And, you know, I've been saying this for weeks too, not having William Saliba in the back sucks so much. It's not necessarily a knock on on Rob Holding. He's done fine collectively. You know, he's, he's nowhere near Harry Maguire status or anything, but just the, the presence that Saliba brings is... You know, it hurts a lot not having him in there. And I was reading a bunch of articles this morning and Sky Sports put one out that Saliba's season might be over, which blows even more. Um, you know, we were expecting, we reading all these different reports, we were expecting him to be back for the Southampton game. And then when he didn't play, you know, we were expecting him back for the City game too, but he's been ruled out for that game. And, you know, a lot of a lot of these articles are saying that he's done for the season. He hasn't recovered from his back injury quite like everybody thought he would. So, you know, his absence makes it way harder, but doesn't change, you know, doesn't change what we need to do moving forward, I don't think. Um, going down that early can be tough, but, you know, I'm glad that we didn't go down without a fight. It's nice to see that if we can go up 2-0 and then concede 2, that we can also do it the other way around. I feel like we threw the the whole kitchen sink at him at the end of the game uh, and couldn't find one more to get the three points. But Saka, Odegaard, and Martinelli all had fantastic games. Gabby Jesus, apart from, you know, the back line, was probably one of the players that didn't perform up to the standards that we're used to him playing. He he lost the ball quite a bit more than, than he normally would. So I think it'll be interesting to see how or if Arteta chooses to start Trissard next game in his place or what the lineup will look like in general. Um, 
and how I'll choose to utilize him. But by no means are we in a crisis of any kind. I don't think we're still at the top. City still have to win their next two games to go ahead, you know, and so do we. It's as simple as that. Seem pretty calm over there. I don't know if I'd be uh, feeling the same way if I were in your position. Well, it's just because you're moody. I I was I was talking Aww. to Griff, I was talking to Griff about this Winks and I'm sure you agree. He was he was essentially talking about the importance of Tomiyasu and how yeah. if if Tomiyasu was healthy, then in these big games you could just slide Ben White straight back into center back. Um, I, I think I think that's a massive loss. And I don't know if we want to talk about the city game now, but I'm happy to. Yeah, and I, I'm sure all of our our TikTok alg- algorithms are the same. We've sort of all seen that Gary Neville clip going around of like before the season, if you were asked if you could play one game and that game and decide if you win the title or not, you'd take that in a heartbeat. And Arsenal is still in that position right now to where you have to go to the Etihad down a Saliba. So like talk us through the road of emotion because I've seen all over Twitter you know, troops, I feel like is a terrible representation of, of the Arsenal fan base, but him essentially saying they've already bottled the title. So like talk, talk us through where you're at, because I feel like, I feel like Nate's a little bit more confident. So I'm curious as, as to where you're at. Yeah. So I'm very stat, like I test is super important, but when it comes to this stuff, you know, been doing a ton of research the, since Friday on stuff for this game um as far as far as stats go and and you look at the lineup and and not seeing Saliba in there will hurt a ton Twitter is going crazy with all these different predictions for how we're going to start whether we do move Ben White there and put Thomas Party at right back or put Kieran Tierney on the right side and then put Jorginho at the holding spot but I have no idea what he's going to do I think that we I I'd love to see Trissard start the game i have no idea what would be the best use of moving people around our back line i'd love to see ben white go into the center back role but thomas party's talents at holding mid would be wasted at right back i feel like and you know we all know how hard kieran tierney works so i think that putting him at right back wouldn't be too far of a stretch that might that might be a good shout and and taking out rob holding and putting ben white in there but Statistically, we're still the best performing away team in the Prem this year. Um, I know the that the Etihad is different, but we've got something like 35, 36 points in our, all of our away games this year. Um, we've lost the last 11 games against City in the Prem. Uh, so I think that, you know, Wednesday is going to be a true, true, yeah, which is crazy. But I think that, that Wednesday is going to be a true test, you know, for this group of youngsters and I'm glad that it that Southampton obviously would have loved to get three points, but I'm glad that the Southampton game ended the way it did, where we were the ones that were coming back. N- not that we had to play City off of a game like West Ham or Liverpool, where the other team came back and tied it. Um, it's tough to give a prediction. I think knowing these things, City's almost fully healthy. I don't know if Nathan Ake is going to be back or not. I know he had a knock and and was out for a game or two, but you know, missing we're missing Saliba and Tommy. I have a weird feeling there might not be a ton of goals in this game, though, for some reason. And assuming how much you guys love talking about how we've dropped points in three straight draws and are bottling the league or whatever you guys probably think differently. But I have a weird feeling it's going to be close and low scoring. Do you guys win as a hat trick. If you get I've and since like November, I've been saying that City's going to win the league just because I think they're better. But like if you guys win on Wednesday, like that's the true testament that like that you guys deserve to win the yeah. league. Like 100 percent after that. If you guys go to the FE had with City, what is it like? They're on like an eight or nine game win streak. I think they've tied once in I that span. But like in this form, if you guys go there and get a result, like yeah. Yeah. Fair play. <laughs> I clap. I clap for you, but I just I don't see that happening. Not a lot of people do, but that's uh that's where we that's where Vegas makes their money. Arsenal are going to shock the world (laughs) on top of the table the entire year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no way. I I said it with Griff on our Mecca moments too, that like when we were talking about the second half of the season, I was like, I feel like you guys would have felt the same way at the time too, but Newcastle and City are our two toughest games remaining on our schedule. So they'll, you know, continue to treat every game as a final. And I, 
yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what what lineup Arteta puts out for sure. I said it in in the Mecca, um, but I think and I think Dobes was talking about it a lot. I think on one of the podcasts before the fact that Man City has been fighting for a title for the past five years and Arsenal hasn't been in this position in a very long time, I think is going to benefit them a lot in these final games. So I'm, I'm, I agree with you. I'm very interested. They're, they're a lot more I'm used to the title. pressure than than yeah. our guys are. This, this is the first time that a lot of our guys are playing for a Prem title. Yeah. So, And then also one thing I will say before I actually have to jet out of here. Um, after watching the Arsenal game that you guys tied against Southampton, I know it's completely different circumstances to like Chelsea and where they're at, but watching a lot of the Arsenal players like drop to their knees in exhaustion after like – giving it their all i hadn't seen that in a very long time from watching chelsea games so that is something that i was like wow like yeah they tied 3-3 and it wasn't a good result in the first half but they definitely left it all out on the field arteta arteta is a bottled title away from achieving what ole did like just just saying yeah yeah a (laughs) hundred percent and yeah i mean come on like i i think i think what happens is City win on uh, on Wednesday, and then Arsenal drop more points on the back half of the season. I think that whoever wins this game, truthfully, is going to like go on and win the title. And I just think that even if it's a draw or like a loss from Arsenal's perspective, I think the gap is going to get a lot bigger than what it could be if if Arsenal win this game. So um, I think that'll be interesting too. Like I don't want to say that it's the make or break for the season, but it is the make or break for the season. What a fi- what a fixture! What a fixture! Apologies if my boss for some reason listens to this, but I have a fat meeting on my calendar Wednesday <laughs> afternoon, and I will be watching every single second of this game. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, Bush, we can't hear uh, you, brother. We lost you again. I, Here we I, go, I will, Grandpa. I will say it's been interesting. Like, there's a like a misconception that like I don't want Arsenal to win the title because I have so many friends that are Arsenal fans and I love talking shit. Like, if Arsenal stopped the treble, like, f- fan fucking tastic. But also, if you guys bottle it, like, even better. Like, it's like a win. It's like a win win situation. Like, I have zero faith in us beating them. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And that's gonna be a tasty preview later on in the episode when we talk about Arsenal City. Uh, we're all going to be, you know what, man, I'm off, I'm off sixth hour on Wednesday and I'm going to have my feet on my desk. Just absolutely chilling like a villain watching that game, man. Winks, I'm going to blow your phone up, man. Butch, just be Butch, ready what, for that. Butch, what do we just talk about for five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I was saying we're going to preview it later. You know what I mean? We're going to preview it later. We'll just, we'll just hit it twice. We'll hit it twice. <laughs> yeah, we'll hit it twice. Um, hey, listen, we had some good games on Saturday. Fulham beat Leeds 2-1. to one. That's a good win for Fulham as they push for Europe. Brentford and Villa with the 1-1 draw. And I'm going to be honest, that's something that I kind of saw like happening. Two good teams. We've talked about Aston Villa being a team that's really shot up the table. You know, shout out to them, man. They're just, they're just doing great things over there. Crystal Palace 0-0 with Everton. Leicester with a huge win against Wolves 2-1 in their relegation battle to stay in the league. And then the last game on Saturday to round it out, my Liverpool Reds defeated Nottingham Forest three to two in a thriller of a game. Um, Congrats, man! Yeah, no wonder you're here today, bro. Yeah, no fucking yeah, hey. You know, man, I'm just it's it was a good weekend. I haven't had many of these. I need you guys to you know sympathize with me there. I haven't had many weekends where I come that's, here happy. That's six points in the last two games. Yeah, you know. And your I last feel, win before great. that was what? What was your last win before that one? I don't remember. Or Leeds. I, I think I think it was <laughs> United, right? Might have been United, but all Seven I know up. is that it was so long ago. Work. We don't we don't remember. No, true. And but, yeah, we, we made another final by then. Yeah. I will. God dang it, man! <laughs> I will say this: my blood pressure is a lot lower than it was, so I feel better physically. But uh, the biggest things I want to talk about from this game is, first of all, Nottingham Forest showed up to play. And I think we can all say that, you know, they scored two goals. They looked pretty good. They played us well. They battled us well. Morgan Gibbs white. I think Henry shouted out in the Mecca, whoever gets this kid, if they go down, they've got a good player coming in. I will say that wholeheartedly a goal and assist. Um, My biggest takeaway is that 
Diogo Jota is finally starting to come alive. Mm -hmm. He's had a really rough season. He's been injured for four months. He's not scoring goals. He's not doing what he was doing last year where he was just a bagsman. And he scored in our last game, and then he had a double over the weekend um, to help us win this game. You know, And that's something that I've been waiting to see because I genuinely feel like this entire season, if Mo Salah doesn't score, Liverpool doesn't score. That's how I felt. And, you know, most Salah's got 16 goals, seven assists. You look at everybody else, like Nunez has eight, but everybody else has like two to four goals. It's been so lopsided and, and one-sided to Mo Salah that I'm looking at Jota and I'm like, you're finally healthy. We need you to kickstart this back run of the, of the season of games that we have. Yeah. And you also don't have to play Nunez all the time. And like, that should be like a goal at least that he misses typically. So potentially someone else can put it in the back of the net. <laughs> True. You know, Nunez hasn't had a great season. I get that, but it's nice to see Jota back. Luis Diaz came back. He was out for five months. We all know he's an electric player. I think he's going to be a huge part of us pushing for either champions league or Europa league um, for that four or five spot. Uh how about Trent Alexander-Arnold? Three assists in his last two games. I know we talk about his defensive woes, but I think we can all say that offensively these last two weeks, he's really, really done a lot for us in getting us six points. Um, what do you contribute that to? What do I contribute that to? Yeah. In what way? Like, what? what's the difference? Uh, obviously, he's been ass all year. And not saying that he was defensively great because he – was at fault for a couple of the goals over the last two weeks, but three assists in two games, like that's huge. Is there anything different going on? I don't watch Liverpool all the time. So like, I wouldn't know the difference one week to another. So is there anything different going on? I don't know necessarily if anything different is going on. What I do know is that he looks confident the last two weeks in terms, especially offensively, he looks confident. Um, when you think of Trent, you have to think offensive. He's an offensive wingback. You know, he's a Danny Alves type of player. He's not a guy that's going to give you much defensively. We've talked about it. What we need him to do is continue to provide assists and provide dangerous opportunities for the forwards to score. He has to be dangerous. And he was dangerous this weekend. Um, his stats prove it. You know, if, and I'll probably say this, like if Trent Alexander Arnold can do this and provide assists and, and, create chances where we score goals. If he's at fault for a goal or two and we still win the game, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I'll do whatever it takes to win the damn game. I don't give a shit. I don't give a two shits. If, if we, if we create game, seven chances through Trent, but they score eight goals and we finish none of them, I'm okay with that. No, no. Did you hear what I said? Don't spin zone me. Mm -hmm. I said we, we have to win the game and I will be okay with it. If we win the game, if he's producing I, offensively, I understand the point you're trying to make, getting, but it's incredibly low dusted. standards. If he is yeah. dusted all game, I understand what you're saying, but you just need to rate. Well, you can keep your standards the same for your players. That's fine. I just know that I would call for higher standards for my club. Well, first clear. of all, Wambasak is clear. Oh my gosh. No, that's not. No, clear. no way. Oh my God! Juan's Juan's added uh, something to his game, He's though. Clear. Yeah, sure has. Juan was the being competent with the ball. That's it. That's all he had to do to be a top right back, and was to literally just learn how to have the ball for more than a couple seconds. So that's it. I agree with you. I agree. He he does look a different player, Juan Basaka. But what I'm when, saying is, what the point I'm trying to prove is, I don't think Trent is ever going to be a world-class defender, pure defender. I don't think that's we're ever going to see that side of him. He's 24. He, I don't think he's going to reach that. But what he does do is, re, is bring that offensive contribution to a team that has struggled to win games. We have struggled. If he can continue to provide that offensive flair and offensive creativity to our offense, I'm, I'm okay with that right now because we, we have to win games. Mm -hmm. If we don't win out, it's we're not making it. It's that seventh place standard that's creeping in. Hey, you know what? I'm 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 just gonna be happy if we get fifth right now because I'm looking at the table. We are on 50 points. 
were we have a game in hand over Spurs and Villa who are right above us in fifth and sixth. We are nine points behind United. So it's a long shot getting the Champions League, right? We have to push for you our, guys, our you thoughts. You guys don't have – you don't have a difficult schedule. We don't, but – Yeah, you, I mean, it just depends on what Spurs you get, what Fulham you get, what Brentford you get, because those can all be tough games depending on which team shows up. No, 100%. If any team shows up for Spurs. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, which left. we're going to get to soon, folks. Mark my words. <laughs> um so, yeah, we'll move on. But overall, just a big win for us, obviously. You know, wins have been hard to, hard to come by. So I'm excited for that. And uh, it was a good weekend. I watched um, 45 minutes of that match, and it was the first 45 minutes. And I got back to my hotel room from on vacation from lunch, and it was 3-2. to two, And I was like, sick. This is exactly how I feel about watching soccer sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw zero of the five goals. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I thought Trent in that, like, Zinchenko-esque, uh, defensive mid role was interesting, and I don't think that sets him well up defensively. So I think sometimes the way that Liverpool do play, he just naturally gets exposed anyway. Um, but I, I, it's interesting because he will be able to find those positions on the on the wide parts from middle of the field to be able to whip that you know kind of trademark ball. But um, yeah, yeah, Trent is he, he, you can't win all the games when you let up four. Like, <laughs> I think tw- tw- and 24 is not too young to still continue improving. Like, very I think true. That's the thing is his defensive like attributes have not gotten better at all. If anything, yeah. they've gotten worse. That I know. That's why I'm saying I don't think he'll ever be a world class defender yeah, because like, I don't see yeah. the improvement going this way. It's going down. You should just mm-hmm. play as like an eight or somehow figure out to play in the midfield because he is class going forward. But it's I don't like, think he'll do enough running for it though. Like, I don't think he has one v one is his biggest issue. Like it, yeah. and like he, he loses a mark and can get skinned in a, a quick step over. But going forward, he's electric. I agree. No, it's well. That's perfectly well said. I agree. Um, let's move over to yesterday Sunday's games. We had a four nil win for West Ham. And what a big win for them! What huge. a big win! That's like huge. a couple of weeks in a row where they've picked up points. That's huge. I think we all, all of us can agree. We don't want to see a team like West Ham go down. You know no. what I mean? Like they're, they're too good to, to go down at the second. False. Division. No, yeah. I want I West Ham to go, go down, down so bad. Yeah, I, want, I want Declan Rice for Get 20 million. Gone. We can <laughs> kill Antonio for five, bro. Yes. <laughs> David Moyes, man, keep them, keep them afloat. And uh, the last game on Sunday, man, oh man, Newcastle. 6-1 over Tottenham, and let me tell you something. This is this is literally how the game went, chat. I went to my Keurig. I put a Keurig cup in my Keurig. I pressed the start button. I was gone for four minutes. I turned around. It was 3-0. 3-0. I had a hot cup of coffee. I almost spit that shit out. I couldn't believe it. It was 3-0 inside six minutes of the game. Who? Who? Break this down, man. What an intro to that game. <laughs> um, well, I can't break it down because I didn't watch it. Uh, I will preface this <laughs> entire conversation with the fact that I was on a flight from kickoff and I landed at full time. And in hindsight, <laughs> that was the best decision I've ever made. Um, so, yeah, landed and I was like frantically checking service to just potentially look at a score you know while we're 20 minutes out on the flight and it finally came through and I was like I laughed I did I laughed um I I told you guys we'd get thrashed at at St. James so I do feel good about telling our listeners that the Newcastle money line was the play and that uh (laughs) there was just no scenario where they showed up today did I expect that no um I haven't watched any of the highlights. I haven't watched anything, but I saw Jacob Ramsey's pass on the third goal for uh, on Twitter or something, which was, a, it was great. Sick. Um, so I, I don't have a ton of um, tactical analysis. They set up in a four, three, three, which is something that the fans had kind of hoped for in some capacity because it's been so stagnant and not working. Going to St. James probably isn't the location to attempt to to do that with Pedro Porro and even Perisic as very much so not traditional uh, uh, four back uh, wing backs. So 
apparently they got skinned. They looked horrible. Um, Eric Dyer is still my center back at the club, and the extension is coming this week. Um, they, I, I it was a damn shame for Pappy Sar. I saw he got subbed. Um, I have really, really high hopes for that kid, and I think he will he'll excel in his future. But he got subbed off for a redemption pick from Davidson Sanchez, who only let in one goal for the rest <laughs> of the game. So at some point, uh, you got to feel good for that guy. Um, yeah, yeah, yep. This <laughs> Dude, is it, it was, right? It was my favorite thing. So for those that don't follow Andy on <laughs> – on twitter like pre pre kickoff <laughs> the last tweet he posted before he flew was the panic on this app because we're running a back four let this off brand content <laughs> <laughs> literally five minutes into the game down three nothing like it was the funniest like string of events that i saw not look at, watching the game yeah <laughs> look at scoreboard look at andy's twitter looking for like reaction updates and that's the last one it was perfect uh you know, yeah who i think we can we can agree here that stellini completely got it wrong and i think he was a little bit out of his depth trying to do that his job yeah we yeah so much so he got fired fired. yeah you know he's so yeah i um the stellini thing yeah i think number one the issue is he should have never been in that position um at some point you have a, a lifetime assistant coach to antonio conte who is that exactly that gives good opinions gives good advice gives you know what you want an assistant coach to be so he was thrown into that role and even said in the pre-match like presser at some point, or no, it was it was the post-match. I was reading his comments, and someone was like, "Is this the worst loss of your career?" And he his literal response was, "He's like, I've been a head coach for two weeks, um, so yeah, you know, I guess it, <laughs> it sure is." is. <laughs> um, so he even knew, like, he was like, "Look, I," and, and the one thing that I hate that he kept saying was that I just hope this was down to tactics. He kept saying it. He's like, I just hope to God that I was the problem. He's like, I hope that the tactics were that wrong and that, you know, that that was the resulted outcome and for no other reason, meaning player effort or player give a shit level or, you know, I, I don't think, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think any of those guys have any, any of that. Frankly, our bench was, was laughable it was it was a premier league team's bench and there's no guys that you'd ever heard of um so yeah you know you get thrashed we, we got the we got the update that stellini has gone here's my favorite part of the weekend um i'm gonna read you the club announcement from daniel daniel levy the chairman of the board and percentage owner what a legend um man. legend love, love that guy. guy so great guy this huge, is huge fan this is great my favorite lines i've read from him and the and the the club in general so sunday's performance against newcastle was wholly unacceptable it was devastating to see we can look at many reasons why it happened and whilst myself the board the coaches and players must all take collective responsibility ultimately the responsibility is mine daniel levy eating some of his own words saying yes i am part of the problem next sentence Christian will leave his current role along with his coaching staff. So <laughs> my name is Daniel Levy. I'm taking full responsibility. I'm going to fire somebody else. I'm going <laughs> to let somebody else go. And we're going to start over from here. So he's not taking responsibility for shit. The club, the fans, everyone is just fucking in shambles. There's not one positive thing to say about this. Ryan Mason gives a shit about the club. That's going to be cool. The team cares about the guy. Harry Kane played with him for a couple of years. Um, it's good to see he's back, I guess. Um, the return of Ryan Mason. The return of Ryan it. Mason, the exit of Harry Kane, the, you know, the Pochettino to Chelsea. It has just been so fun. Every day I wake up and I wish I wasn't a Spurs fan, but um i am and i'm gonna be uh and i'm gonna watch this fucking game on whatever day we play united and thursday baby it's gonna be so great I, dude. i'd be remiss if i didn't mention the fact that you pulled your goalie at halftime as, as yeah you did <laughs> oh um it dropped a whopping 3.8 in one half <laughs> yeah apparently 
to believe the tweets or not, apparently Hugo Hugo got in a fight with someone in the locker room and refused to come out for the second half. I heard. So, oh, whoa. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, with who? Did it say? Nope. No, no pr- further Eric detail. It, it said um, Harry, it said Harry Kane was yelling at the guys too, right? I I would hope something maybe. something like he Jesus. was, but they couldn't make out what he was saying. Or yeah, something. Don't. He had marbles yeah. in his mouth. Yeah. Nice. Harry, nice. Harry, Harry, <laughs> Harry, don't worry. You'll be you'll be in a safe space soon. Don't worry. Harry. Safe space. Um. Yeah. Bayern's really. Yes. Yeah, speak, speaking of speaking of that, real quick. You you were giving me crap last week for having Declan Rice in my background talking about how well yeah, that goes. That is and now that is pulled. a good point. And considering Classic, the Gakpo United, one, yeah, yeah bro, you might whatever. have just done the Mecca background curse on yourself. That's you know what? That's perfectly fine. If we don't get Harry Kane, we get Osman. Darn, that sucks. <laughs> what a what a yeah, terrible dude. trade off. You want Osman? He's younger anyway. So I, I want I want my background. I want Mr. Kane. I want to get him his first trophy. He's going to do the Van Persie repeat. He's going to come at 30 years old. His next year, he's going to win his first ever trophy. It's written in the stars. That's pretty hard to argue with. Old I prediction. Want, I want awesome, it, but whatever. We don't have to agree <laughs> on this. Well, you know, overall, man, I think we can all say who we felt for you in a way. You know? No. So, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. Okay. Maybe not. Chicken uh, fried. Chicken fried. Chicken fried. Seven zero. Yeah, bro. Uh, literally, I don't think literally so. in the span of a month, uh, who's a sporting director has gone to jail. They fired two coaches. Daniel Levy's had a complete meltdown, and Harry Kane's going to United all yeah. within a month. Like, and then they've also lost a ton of games. So it's been a weird month for you, eh? Holy man. You guys say weird. I say consistent. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> consistent. Excellent word choice. Uh, anyway, so that that's our recap of the Premier League. And now we had two tasty FA Cup semifinals that we're going to break down here. We've got the first game, which took place on Saturday, April 22nd. Manchester City won 3-0 against Sheffield United. I think we can all agree that we kind of saw this coming, this kind of result. But what was surprising is that Erling Holland did not score. Instead, they had a hat-trick hero from the man with the best hairline I've ever seen. Riyad Mahrez. What a phenomenal performance from him. What do you guys great. think? He was great. And to be honest with you, I, I felt He's a little so uh, I felt a little uh bad for Southampton or not for Southampton, sorry, but for for Sheffield because they played that first half so well. They contained everything for Manchester City and then so early on to give up a pen by like the what was it like 19-year-old forward uh you know, in, in the box to try to cover defensively. I thought that they just imploded from then, but I would have loved to see like all the way into the 70, 75th minute, still zero, zero. I would have, that would have been cool, but um, three, nothing. I didn't expect anything less, but like you said, a little surprising that Holland didn't score, but whatever, save it for, save it for Arsenal. Yeah. I mean, in, in a sense, like we have always known Riyad Mahrez is, is a player who has provided the juice in the big moment, right? I mean, this guy won the Premier League at Leicester. He's won multiple titles at City. Like, he is unbelievable. He really is. Uh, I was looking up. He scored 24 goals last year in all competitions as a winger. And he's already got 16 this year with another month or so to play. And they're still in three competitions. This guy could easily score yeah. another 20 to 25. Just a baller. He's City does this thing where they stash ridiculously good players and you forget about them because they don't play for two matches in a row and then they come out and just bag three. Yeah. And they just like shit, like guys you forgot about basically. And they come out and you're like, oh shit, yeah, Red Mars is disgusting. <laughs> Do it all the time. I think that's what gives City the edge over so many teams in the world. Yeah. I when you have depth like that, they it's spent just... two billion since Pep's been there. Yeah. $2 billion they spent, something like that. But overall, uh, a, a sound win for Manchester City. The real tasty game took place yesterday. Manchester United and Brighton. We had a nil-nil that went to penalty kicks, and nobody missed until the seventh shooter. The seventh <laughs> shooter. But in all honesty, before you guys talk, Dobes and Henry, like this game, was like I was really impressed with Brighton. 
Now, United did well on the counter, I thought, but man, Brighton's combination play, their ability to play these little one-touch intricate passes in tight space and these runners off the ball, like they're fun to watch. It's so good. They're so good at their system and how they build up. It's fun. Yeah. I was reading yeah. a lot prior, or like in between uh, the Sevilla game and the Brighton game, just more about Deserby and his tactics and like how he sets up his team. Um, Cause obviously like we've seen the highlights and how electric Brighton is and we've talked about it a bunch, but from a tactical breakdown, something that I found to be interesting was what, what they say is they actually like create like um, like false senses of transition. So if you pay attention, they typically will possess between the two center backs 10 to 15 yards in front of their own 18. And they literally bring the forward or the cam, whoever's pressuring the center backs all the way out of position. Like literally they will keep passing right there until they come up. And then as soon as they come up, the whole team has to press and then they bring it out wide to Matoma or Marsh. And then they expose people on the counter. But like, if it's not there originally, they create false transition. So I found that to be really fascinating. And I saw it a bunch of times during the United game like there are times where it looked like they were keeping like meaningless possession inside of their half and then you could see one person like break the press and then they would counter really quickly so I think on I think on a different day we get a different Matoma and maybe a different day Ten Hag decides to start the low out there Matoma very easily could have put in a couple uh throughout the game and Sally Marsh had opportunities as well so um I honestly like feel great that we pulled away with a zero zero and then winning in pens for a lot of reasons but i think we were fortunate to take that game to overtime for sure yeah i would agree yeah. Tom, what do you think um yeah i'll piggyback i'll piggyback off that i mean obviously like coming into this game like we've we've all seen the teams at brightons this year and, and they, they play a beautiful style of football and you know what what that midfield three did sort of in that first half half was an absolute master class um and we've seen that a bunch sort of this season with with United, like Erickson, Casemiro, and Bruno is is an unreal midfield three when you're playing against Nottingham Forest, who you know you're going to have all the ball and they can be creative. Um, but Erickson too many times gets – he's so slow. And when you play against a team that can high press like that and is quick at moving the ball and closes you down very quickly, um, Erickson got kind of caught a little bit. And so the first half, I wasn't too surprised. I texted Hannah around like the 40th minute was like, Believe it or not, I think this game calls for Fred. I'm sure enough, Fred came on a bit uh, and was a game changer. Um, honestly, a lot of this game was sort of a snooze fest, um, a little bit from both teams. I think just from the United standpoint, there's a few players who obviously you sort of have to shout out. Um, Luke Shaw, absolutely um, world class, shows it again. He can just step in, arguably the man of the match. Um, have to shout out to Iceman, Victor Lindelof, who at, at this point, like Harry Maguire, I mean, we've said it a million times, he should never hit the field. But Victor Lindelof, after that performance, him and Luke Shaw, up until Veron comes back, should be our center back pairing moving forward, uh, bar none. And then obviously you have to shout out Wambasaka. Um, he's slowly put himself into the top right backs in all of England. And, you know, sort of the change that he has made over the last year after wanting him absolutely gone to now learning that he has the best tackle success rate since he's been the, the 2017, 2018 season. 78.6 of tackles. There's something like 571 attempted tackles. He's won 450 of them. So mm -hmm. he is just the, the performance that he put in again, Matoma even came out. I think there was a quote of him today being like, I got absolutely defeated um, this weekend. And then you just look at the pens. Um, you know, the most nervous I was, most people will probably think it was Weghorst and I was nervous for all of them running from room to room, but Jaden Sancho, when he stepped up and had that pen, that was one to where knowing everything that he had sort of been through over the past year, missing the pen in the Euros, and then to step up there and bury it like that um, just makes your heart happy. If you, if you love football, I was so happy for him that he did score that and obviously to get the W. Um, so six weeks, we got City. Not sure if it's a good thing or not that we, we play them, but, you know, at the end of the day, if we have to stop them from a treble, it's in our own hands. Um, so happy to be in another final, you know, Eric Ten Hag. Two finals, one season, finishing top four. Uh, I'm, I'm all about it. So good performance from the boys. Um, we'll see what happens moving forward. Yeah, I thought that was expertly said. And, and one person I want to shout out that I thought was unbelievable was Moises Caicedo. On dude, he's, he's so – he's, dude, dude. I, I, I didn't really want him 
as bad until I watched him play and what he did to the Bruno Fernandez, Casemiro in that fucking in Erickson. Like he he but 100 percent better than McAllister, but like he was just unfucking believable. He was he seemed like he was everywhere. Yeah, he yeah. moves different. Like his his attraction to the ball and then I, like the way he can just quickly open up and find another quick pass and then find more space. Mm-hmm. Like he's on and off the ball so quickly to his teammates and then repositioning himself to be able to open up more. And like they, they moved everything through him. It was, he was, he was electric to watch. Yeah. And still yeah. only 21 years old. Like, I think that that's he crazy was. too. Like McAllister is, you know, 24. Um, but I thought it was interesting that we got to watch both McAllister and, um, you know, and Quesado together because like those are two people that are at least targets for Manchester United. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but we also saw why like Quesado was so heavily linked with Arsenal in the January transfer window. Like recognizing that kind of talent in a midfielder um, that young, especially, I think he is going to be a top top player as long as he continues to be part of teams and good programs. Um, I think he'll be really solid for a long time. His favorite team two months ago was was Arsenal. Now all of a sudden he his favorite team is Real Madrid. Yeah. So I think this dude just wants to get the fuck out of Bright. So any any time <laughs> any time club that'll take him, he'll go. I, I would take him in an absolute heartbeat. I also do think you just have to like that that Brighton team. I can't say it enough that like they played the brand of football that I wish United was playing. And I think mm-hmm. I feel like that's the best compliment that you can give somebody else is the way that they played in that first half is how I wish that that this United squad could play. Yeah, and it's, like, funny, too. I guess, like, people always talk about, or at least, like, I think with Ten Hag, like, I knew that he had to come in and, like, tighten up the defense, like, right away when he came into uh, when he came into this team. But then, like, next year, I'm assume, assuming that we'll be seeing a lot more of, like, the possession and the moving forward. Deserbi's come in, and, like, while Potter instilled, like, a really good philosophy while he was at Brighton, Deserbi came in right away and was like, yeah, we're not waiting till next year to do this. Yeah. We're just going to do this now, and they've done it so well. When, in reality, I would put, like, a lot of United starting 11 against Brighton starting 11 like pound for pound and like typically take the United player I just think it's interesting that like they can implement that so fast and we're still waiting for it next year hopefully yep yeah 100 percent. well that's going to be a really tasty FA Cup final which we will preview for you all in about a month's time when that game is about to take place um that'll be tasty man Wembley it's going to be rocking you guys are going to be nervous you, you guys are you guys are going to get so sick of me for the next month and a half saying that we're in a final Oh my God. Here we go. I would love to be there. (laughs) Book the flights in Istanbul, I think is what Klopp said. (laughs) Well, let's transition. There's one thing that I I spoke to you guys about before we started tonight, and we're going to talk a little bit about Bundesliga. We're going to talk a little bit about Serie A. Before we do that, let's really break down this STL City game Mm. because the boys from the Lou went up to Colorado. Um, if it weren't for Roman Berkey, we probably could have lost this game four or five one, to yeah. be honest. And yeah. uh, we're gonna give him some some flowers tonight. We're gonna we're gonna show him some love. But I'm gonna let you guys like break this down. What were your highlights from this game? What are some of the highs and the lows from the performance you saw on Saturday? Yeah, yeah. This is kind of a tough watch. Um I it was I I also was watching it on the beach at about uh ten thirty at night uh in in Fort Lauderdale so definitely can't give the best view on all of it but yeah you're right if Berkey wasn't there he we he showed why he's making that money and why he probably is still the best goalie in this league um guy was on his head and he's so demanding as a captain so every mm-hmm. single time he'd save the ball you know he's up screaming at the guys and. I, you know, we've watched that all year. This one, you could even tell he was starting to get tired of it. Like he, he's made his eighth save and it's just like, like his body language is like, fuck me, dude. So to (laughs) me, that tells me at some point that he knew we weren't going to find any more. Um, The, it was the same formation. It was a lot of the same guys. Um, we, we don't have a ton of depth in, in the striker or offensive positions. So there weren't a ton of options that I was like, you know, this will be a great sub. So Jao Klaus goes down um, and, and has, uh, what was it, a hamstring problem now? And he's going to be out 10 to 14 days, which, which is a massive loss. 
Um, so yeah, I tactically, I don't know what went wrong. I know that the counter worked in the exact same way that we want it to work. And mm-hmm. India Navasilov sent a beautiful ball over the top. Um, and I love when wingers connect with other wingers. Like that's, that's like, well, my, my vision of how you play soccer is that that's what you want. Like the winger mm-hmm. is to find the nine the striker up top or the strikers making play on the inside, your other wingers back post. That's how I played. And I love when they connect. So I was, uh, that goal was great. Um, but you could just see Colorado coming down the throats at that point, pause. Um, and uh, we gave up a screamer in the 91st um, it, the defense just kind of fell asleep. It was a great flick, honestly, through the back line too. Um but yeah, it was a bummer. It, once you go that goal up and you're holding on to a lead and letting up a lead at the end and still coming away with a point, that's always going to feel like a loss, even if we were definitely not the better team. Um, but yeah, that, that was definitely kind of what I saw. Yeah, I, I think I think what was like not working for us in the first half is uh, Colorado sat three guys on our back line um and they were playing they were playing on the defenders like they got called off sides i feel like six times in the first half really quickly because they were trying to push the line as high as possible so there was a couple of times where berkey had to make you know really quick saves because we were so high up um and colorado was fine giving up a couple off sides call, calls if it meant continuing um to put our defense under pressure so that was the entire first half like we couldn't make an adjustment and then also You know, Akil Watts got his first start for us in the center midfield instead of, you know, Indiana. Um, I don't really know how to evaluate his 45 minutes, to be honest with you, because I feel like we just consistently got run through. And was that his position to sit a little bit deeper in front of the back four? I don't know, but he got subbed off his hat at half. Um, And as soon as Indiana came on, like you said, who the game changed as well. Um, I just think that we're going to continue to go up against teams that are going to try different tactics with us. Um, and I think, you know, keeping a really high line on that offensive side is something that it's going to give us trouble in the future. We know that Berkey likes to come out. He's fine, like sweeping, but uh, he wasn't quick enough to come out and sweep last game. He just like stood on his head on the goal line, which is fine, but that's not going to happen every game. So I think that was the main tactic that I saw in the first half that gave us so much trouble. Um, and then, chalk it up to Indiana or not, we we seem to have a lot more uh, sustained pressure and sustained amounts of the ball in the second half. So um, it was interesting from a defensive side for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, one thing that I, I liked about this game, the only thing that I'm going to take about us getting a draw is we got to see the leadership from Berkey. I don't know if you guys saw today, but he, he made some comments in the news and he was not happy with the team in general. And I think I'm glad that this happened early because now the guys that were out there playing can wake up and say, man, we really let our captain and our goalkeeper down. We let our team down. He basically called the team out. He said, look, we were making all these saves. The back line was doing all this work. And we felt like some of the guys in the offense positions just weren't, weren't doing enough is what he said, quote unquote. And I like that he said that. And us tying the game actually gave us a chance to say, hey, he's right. You didn't do enough. The back line was getting murdered all game. Berkey was standing on his head for 90 minutes, you know, and that can't happen all the time in this league. You're going to get you're going to get beat. So it's good that they learn that lesson now so they can learn from it and build on it as a group and uh, and just keep moving forward. That's my I- big take. I think it's it's such a huge part of our game too that the defense really does start with the attackers and they're our main source of of high press turnovers and and I, I know the wingbacks are too but if they're not doing that then Berkey's gonna feel that way you know he was getting assaulted and we're so dependent on that press and the ball not even getting to our final third in the first place that um, I think he's right completely. And that's a totally justified shout uh, because that's the way that they've wanted to play and have, and it's worked so well. 100%. 100%. I will, I will say, I I can't stand the fact that the MLS, this is like not a St. Louis city point, but I can't stand the fact that the MLS had every single team in the league wear the same jerseys. 
miserable. I, 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 I like it's the Earth Day. That whole thing is so cool. But I'm seeing highlights all over Twitter, and I'm seeing highlights over Instagram. I don't know who the fuck is playing. <laughs> like seriously, yeah. they're not announcing it. They're just announcing the goals. It's just the, the goals that city. Like literally, I saw a goal, and and uh, Madison was like, "Did you see the city goals?" I got no. It was a different team. Like. <laughs> it just, it just well, doesn't make any sense to me. But it, I, I it's like know. another thing that MLS is so weird because Adidas owns the entire contract. So it's like Adidas just says this is a good idea, and MLS has to be like, yeah. I I, I do think it'll be interesting, like moving forward, like looking at because the the boys play in was it the U.S. Open Cup tomorrow, um, against Union Omaha. I don't know if any of you guys are going. Hope to see you guys there. Um, but they already announced like today, like Yara will be wearing the captain's armband. Like uh, what's the backup goal? Is it's like Lunt or something like that mm. will we'll, we'll, we'll be in net. Um, so I'm actually kind of excited a little bit just to be able to, cause I feel like the only thing I've really watched is we watched so much St. Louis city two last year. And now I've only really watched like the dogs and now we can yeah. to hopefully see some of the, some of the younger guys, um, and get to know some, but excuse me, know some of the younger players and see, see if they can't feature it. It's like the first time that we sort of like extra feel like a full club. It's like, let's give the reserves a shot and see what we got sort of cooking in the pipeline. Yeah. This is like our first round FA cup match yeah, tie go, kind of thing, you know, like it, it'll, it will be cool to see some rotation um, and whether or not those guys can implement the same, you know, way we play. I'm, I'm curious to see how many changes there are because yeah. mm-hmm. we are not deep. Like we we do not have that deep of a team in terms of strength uh, on on the roster. So definitely looking forward to uh, who's who's playing what there. Is there is there any update? The only thing I saw on Klaus at least I don't know if you guys sorry if you guys said it, but like I saw STL City Van Talk or whatever tweet today ten to fourteen days. I don't know if anybody's seen anything else. Like do we know how long that he's potentially out for. That's I think it's just kind of what Carnell alluded to um, 10 to 14 for, a, a, I guess, a strain hamstring strain. Okay. Um, and then um, Sam Adnan, Ad, Adrian on his way out potentially as well. And I, I was following those Barstool Van or the Barstool Van talk, uh, the, <laughs> the St. Louis city van guys. And that they were, they were like, wait, that's an insane decision. Like we don't have strikers. Like, why are we, why are we letting this kid go on loan or, or transfer? So yeah, we don't, that it'll be, that'll be an interesting role to fill for sure. Cause he's not good. And, uh, that spots and Lutz for, has a plan. Uh, oh, that, and that plan involves my Brazilian from Merseyside. <laughs> Roberto <laughs> Firmino. Every time it, I feel like Fabrizio has posted about him like a few different times and every single time he's like, where do you see, where do you see Firmino? And I'm like the only person I see in the comments. It's like STL city. Everybody else is like Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, a disappointing draw for St. Louis city this weekend, but we are still atop the league in the Western still conference. The we are in first baby and we hope to stay there. So our next league game, we are back in action this Saturday against Portland back at home in the loop. Know. Uh, it's going to be nice. I'm excited. That'd be a good one. So let's transition here. We're going to talk briefly about the Bundesliga. That's very, very awful. short because we've got a amazing title race brewing between Dortmund and Bayern. They're both 29 games played. Dortmund has 60 points. Bayern has 59. I, I want this to be known. Thomas Tuchel, since taking over Bayern Munich, has two wins, two draws, and three losses. They fired Nagelsmann, who had lost three games all year, basically. In all competitions, too, I think. Three games in all competitions, yeah. Nagelsmann. Yeah. And Tuchel has already lost as many games as Nagelsmann did in only seven games that he's managed at Bayern Munich. So it makes you think, guys, have Bayern choked this title race? Will Dortmund take over now? They're yeah, I'm gonna say yes. Um, and honestly, like I want to give Bruce Dortmund some credit. They they've been in first place or like right in and around there the entire season. Um, there was like a couple weeks back where Dortmund like lost a game and drew a game, which put Bayern straight back to the top of the table, and then Bayern shit the bed like two games in a row, um, to now where Dortmund's back up top. So I kind of see it like 
I feel like it's the the Arsenal City equivalent of the Bundesliga where Dortmund's like looks like they're finally going to do it, but one slip and Bayern could overtake it and no one would bat an eye because Bayern's been historically that good. Um, but I do feel like if you're in pole position to hold on to this lead, like they're even on games played right now, they can't lose it. Like that would be bottling because they are driving their own destiny right now. Yeah, I... The the Bayern situation is so weird because like Tuchel took over. We we saw that whole Sane Mane drama that sort of happened. Like there's rumors that like Oliver Kahn is going to be out here pretty soon. So like it's kind of like a weird time at, at Dortmund. But at the same time, Hen, Hen, you're spot on. Like this Dortmund team's fucking good. Like I don't know. I, I watched the game. I watched them play Frankfurt this this weekend, and and from front to back, they look so solid that they don't concede a, a ton of goals. They don't have a ton of tough games left either. Like, obviously, like we've seen Dortmund have some blips this year, but like everybody has. So it's one of those leagues where you can get caught definitely any any given day. Um, but I would just love to see Dortmund do it. I mean, I love Bellingham. I would love to see Marco Royce uh, win, win himself another title. Gio Reyna, even though he hasn't featured as much as we all would probably like, I would love to see him win. Um, but at the same time, I would not be surprised to see Dortmund lose one game and Byron and Byron all of a sudden went out uh, just because they do have the, the quality to do that. Um, but I was a little bit disappointed to sort of see Union Berlin fall off. And, and this is why, like, I, I've sort of gone down a little bit on the Bundesliga because it's a two year, a two team race this year and, and Byron still may end up winning. Um, so even in like Dortmund's best season, we still may see the same team win it over and over again um, as much as I love Dortmund, too. Yeah, Dortmund, Dortmund at some point earlier in the year, I, I remember mentioning on the pod that they did have some defensive Swiss cheese. Like, oh, yeah, there was a, there was a mm. while there where and they were still getting points like they were still winning games because they can score five or seven in a game. But they were letting up one, two, three um, in, in a lot of matches. So I think that was definitely been an adjustment they've made and they've been so much more locked down since, you know the last time that I probably mentioned Dortmund on this podcast. So good for them. Yeah. Yeah. They they've given up like numerous goals like that only in like two or three games since, you know, since the yeah. world cup. Um, one of them was to Bayern where it was like a four, nothing game. And then the other one was like a week and a half ago, three or two weeks ago where they gave up like three goals in the second half to tie the team three, three. It was like, it was brutal. Yeah. You know, my thing, you know, I'm going to keep it short and simple. <laughs> There's going to be no better feeling for me than seeing Jude Bellingham win a trophy before he makes the big switch to Liverpool because we only accept winners at this club. And he's going to finally add a trophy to his cabinet. And then we're going to have him for an eight-year contract. And I'm going to be just ecstatic. On what so, grounds do you feel like you nah. can stand on to say we only take winners at oh, this only club? Take like, winners yeah, at this yeah. club. Jude, Jude going to go from winning himself a Bundesliga to playing in the conference league. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> yeah yeah also I like just, i'm trying to think just as fast as you but like what winning transfer have you made in the last like 10 seasons other than james milner van dyke the only, he didn't win Robinson. anything bro they didn't win anything what? What? what do you mean he hasn't won anything prior to liverpool huh <laughs> oh I mean, our, our, wait a second i see what you're saying spin zone Okay, yes. Yes. That wasn't even a spin zone. <laughs> what do you mean? Sometimes I feel like you're not a real person, man. No, I'm with Butch. I mis I misunderstood the conversation. I was I like, what you, Virg, I Virgil in twenty nineteen Champions League, Virgil like Yeah, I just misunderstood it for a second. I and then I remembered you're talking before. I mean Virgil won at Celtic, but I mean that's not anything. I was gonna crazy. say apparently he's the best ever Celtic center back, so that counts for something, right? But no, you're right, Henry. Not many. It was a I was joking around, but obviously I think Jude Bellingham is still going to Liverpool. I don't care what Fabrizio says. I think it's going to happen. Um, so let's transition here into Serie A because in my, in my humble opinion, I genuinely think this is the second best league in the world. Uh, there are some unbelievable talents and phenomenal teams in this league. Guys, I'm going to read off the, the table to you and show you just how much of a race this is. Napoli, and I'm talking race for the Champions League, okay? Napoli are going to win the league. Second place, Lazio, 61 points. Juventus, third place, 59. Milan, fourth, 56. Roma, fifth, 56. Inter, sixth, 54. Atalanta, seventh, 52. 
I, I I've been I've been saying this like this is the second best league in the world. There's there's no doubt about it in my mind. We see that they had three teams left in the Champions League semifinals. We ha- or, and now we have a, or excuse me quarterfinals. Now we have a Champions League semifinal set up between Inter and AC Milan, the two teams that play in the same stadium that are playing in the San Siro in the last ever year that will be in existence. And then we also have Napoli, who's been arguably one of the best teams in the world throughout the entire season. Now all of a sudden we've got Juve brought back from the dead and their 15 point uh, reduction got switched. And all of a sudden they just bumped Jose Mourinho's Roma out of the top four. Like th- this league is, is something that I, I typically have been a Bundesliga guy where like the Bundesliga is like the second league that I've typically followed at, at, outside of the Prem. I have watched more Serie A this year, just strictly because of the amount of teams that are halfway decent and the fact that they make that the run into this champions league, like, there, yeah, sure. You can say like United went a, like a little bit deep in, in the Europa League, but like we have City that's in like left in the Champions League, and then we have three Syria A teams, um, and you know none of them are. Excuse me, the one that's leading the title race is is up. So like it just shows that the depth that this league has, and I, I truthfully think that if if you don't watch it, turn it on because there's so many like cool storylines within it. Like the fact that these two teams play at the same stadium and are playing each other in the, the Champions League semifinal in the last year is like absolutely electric. It's storybook stuff that, that nobody could write. So I, I'm super pumped to see where the Serie yeah. A goes. And I hope that Jose stays at Roma because he makes that league so much better. Yeah, he does. I watched I, – I today I didn't have a ton going on at work and there weren't a ton of matches on. So I tuned in to Atalanta-Roma which in itself was had huge implications and uh, yeah, Roma didn't look great, but the way that each of those teams can score goals are all pretty insane. Like they Roma themselves who under Jose Mourinho are not known to be uh, offensively prone or, you know, that's, they're not going to win games by scoring three, four goals a game. I've still got Pablo Diala and uh, gosh, who scored today? Polistri. I mean, he almost had a worldly of a free kick in the 89th minute to set them up to 3-2 to go in the last seven. Like, you're right. Like, there are storylines everywhere, and I think there's quality, you know, even in this Atlanta side that's not even in top whatever, 10 or, or top five. Like, there's quality across the league. It is fun to watch, definitely. Even, like, Roma in the Europa League. Like, I don't know if you guys caught their game against Feyenoord where they went into the game down one nothing came back and scored twice, then Feyenoord scored, then Roma scored, or excuse me, who was it, Dybala scored in like the 89th yeah. minute to send it to extra time. And then they went on to score an extra time in, in advance in the Europa League. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I The Bundesliga the Bundesliga and Bayern and, and Dortmund is great, but like to me, the, the Serie A blows it out of the water in terms of at least this year. Yeah, 100%. I think uh, last thing I'll say, like, Paulo Dybala is one of the best players in the world. Yeah. And I, think he, I think he's been rejuvenated under Jose Mourinho at Roma. Do you guys see these videos of the Roma fans singing Dybala's name? Like, so sick. Him just like sitting like, down and just taking it all in. Yeah, he has like tears in his eyes on the bench when he gets subbed off because they're like 80,000 Romans just screaming. Like, could you imagine that kind of atmosphere? I, I don't even Same. know how I'd react, man. You know? Um. All right, last thing we're going to get into, it'll be very quick. We will not do a factor cap this week. Instead, I just want to ask all of the fellas on this panel, give me your score prediction for Arsenal City. I'm going to start with Andy Hoover. Give me your score prediction. Let's make it quick, baby. (laughs) I I have some emotional weight on this game for sure. Uh, We're going 3-1 City. 3-1 City for the Hoove Magoove. Let's go. I'm Lucas, you're going last, baby. You know, I love you very much. That sexy little mustache you got there, but you're going last. All right. Doves, you're going next. I was hoping you went hen. Um, <laughs> um, th- this is this. So we're predicting this. We, we always record uh, Mondays before we release on Tuesday. So we're recording this on Monday. The the lineup means a ton to me just to sort of see who, who Arsenal rolls at back four. If they go holding again, there's just in no world that Erling Holland is not just going to absolutely eat holding alive. Like we, we may get holding back bald after fucking <laughs> <laughs> lose that hairline. The hairline will be gone. Um, but but depending on what what Arteta can sort of set up here, like I by no means think that like 
that City is just going to roll over. City does have the experience. They are at home. But I'm sort of with, with Winx's comments earlier. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, a one nothing, 1-1, potentially like at the most 2-1 um, because I think Arteta just knows City. He knows Pep. He knows these players. He's played against them. Yes, there's a bad record. But at the same time, if this Arsenal team can get up for this game, um, and like I, I just pray to God that either way, I'm going to take City 2-1, to one, but I pray to God it's like a Prem Classic. Like I, I pray that we get – an incredible game because these two teams have been the best two teams in the Prem, like bar none the entire season. And I hope we don't get like a, a three nail, four nail city or, or vice versa, but I'm going to one city. I do think Arsenal has a better shot than people are giving them credit for. Um, but the form that city's in it, it's, it's just so hard not to pick them. Yeah. No, great shout. Uh, Hen, how, what are your, what is your prediction? My boy. I think it's actually going to be like a two nothing city. I think it's going to be kind of the opposite of what you're hoping for Dobes. I think that city is just going to put on a masterclass and I think that that's what it's going to be. Um, I just, like you said, the lineup is going to be so important, but if you see holding in there um, and I don't even know like what fully the, the midfield will look like if shock is back fully, I don't know, but I think it's going to be capitalized on one mistake that, that sit or that Arsenal make, whether it's holding or somebody else, um, they're going to score. And then I think Arsenal is going to like shit themselves for a little bit. And then I think it's going to be a two, nothing capitalizing on opportunities. Um, I do think Arsenal is going to play it defensively. I think they're very much going to look for a tie. So I think that they're just going to sit back. It's not good enough though, based off the result. They like, they have to go for it. That's what makes I thought it that, so exciting. I thought if they, uh, if they get a tie, Oh, because then it would go to goal differential. Yeah, bro. They, yeah. Like, they, they, they have to get a result. That's what. Well, then I think that they're going to be stretched and they're going to be open. They're going to lose two nothing. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm in, here we go. Winks. Let's hear it. Butchie, how about you? Yeah. Winks. I'll go quick before I hand it over to you, but I, I know this is going to make your ears bleed, but I genuinely think, I think City's going to win 4-1. I think City's going to score four because the last time these two played, it was a 3-1 win for City at the Emirates. They're at home in a title race. That place is going to be rocking. Southampton just hung up three at the Emirates. So yeah, st- stop it, bro. The the empty head is not gonna be electric, bro. <laughs> it's not gonna be rocking. <laughs> It'll be fucking, something. The, not the gonna be rocking. City fans there might there away. might be more Arsenal fans. Yeah, at that the, stadium the city than fans might turn be, bro. City fans head <laughs> Wembley into a fucking library on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think four one. Um, I just think City will be too dominant. I think they they're just they're the best team in the world right now, bar none. I'm going to leave it there. Winks, what do you think? 2-1 Gunners. I think it's very, very lineup permitting. 1-1 one, one or 2-1, but we need we need a win like Dobe said. So I'm, I'm going to take the three points happily here. Um, but very, very lineup permitting. If Trissard doesn't start, I hope he gets in early and makes an impact. But I think that, you know, we, we, we saw – the run of games Saka had after missing a pen um, before, and he was one of our best players last game. I don't see that streak ending. Martinelli's on a heater right now. Odegaard's playing incredibly incredible. So I think we're going to break him down. It, it almost seems like Arsenal scoring bunches. Like when you guys start hot, you start hot and you get like one or two, like off the back. And then like all of a sudden I, I texted it, Nate on, on Friday. Like if you guys had three more minutes, you guys win that game. So like I think depending on what like what start you get from Arsenal is so key is so key to to how this game goes because if you guys are playing from behind against City, City will pass you guys to death and then somehow like find a way to get another one. So if I think if you guys can get one early and sort of make City have to be stretched a little, and yeah. use Mart- Martinelli and I think you start to start on on the break like i think that's an ideal scenario for for how to yeah. get a result but yeah i mean we we've seen it this season though and and you guys have you know complemented the style of football that we play we can play the exact same 100 percent. so it's going to yeah. be it's going to be an absolute if it's if it hopefully it is a it is a generational prem game on wednesday but if it's not it'll be a tactical master class nonetheless I feel like you yeah. said this early on, so I apologize for asking again. What what's your right back situation going into this game? Like injury, like what's what's going on? Yeah, so so Tommy Yasu's hurt and Ben White's been playing right back all season. Obviously, you know, we've been having holding in the middle, but 
it'll be interesting against the city powerhouse whether or not Arteta decides to push push Ben White to center back instead of holding and then either put Thomas Party back there or Kieran Tierney. I just think that Jack Real is just like the hardest one-on-one defender to go up against. So if he gets a like if he draws a yellow from whoever's playing right back early on, which could be very possible, I think it puts them under a world of pressure. And Kieran um, Tierney, so and, and that's why I wouldn't mind Kieran Tierney back there because yeah. he's one of the hardest working players on our team, if not the hardest working. Um, so yeah, I think that, you, that would be a that would be a juicy matchup. If you run around with your shorts tucked in, you fucking better be. <laughs> you better be. But it's just also like it's hard. It's on his opposite side. Like he's a left back, and it's not it's not the same going from left right. back to right back. Everything's different, and so right. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Arteta's gonna have to make that decision, and you're gonna have to live with it. But this, this I think that would be tough. I can't wait. I was gonna say this is one of those games. Like, I wish my team was playing it in the prem, but like I can't imagine being like an Arsenal fan. Like I, I know Nate has been shitting himself and will continue to shit himself for two more days. Like, these are these are those games that you just think about from the moment that the game on Friday ends. It's like my entire mind would be stuck on fucking City next week. So it's got to be. A, I mean, it's got to be a cool feeling. Arsenal hasn't been there in a while. Yeah, no, it's gonna be electric. It's gonna be electric. And there you have it, folks. If you've not already, request off on Wednesday at 2 p.m. And if you don't, you're capping. Don't, okay? don't worry about requesting off at 145. There's nothing interesting going on then. Oh, that damn. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this, this uh, week's episode of the Mecca Banner podcast. As always, we appreciate you guys. Follow us on the social medias. We will see you next week. Peace. Cheers, lads. Cheers. Yeah, boys. See you, fellas.